I'm going to show you two different ways how you can handle dates in GraphQL. And to do that, I have a little project right here. This is a single file. This is a TypeScript index. And uh, I'm using Apollo Server 2 here. And for my date stuff, I'm using a library called DayJS. This is something that uh, is similar to Moment, but is much smaller. So this thing is only 2 kilobytes, um, as Moment is much bigger. So I'm using Apollo Server 2, and you can see this guy's actually pretty big himself. Uh, and this is what it looks like. So right here I have my resolvers, or sorry, right here are my resolvers, but right here is my type defs. And you notice a difference than this. So in Apollo Server 2, uh, you put GQL in front of it. So you used to just put a string like this for your type defs. Now you do GQL in front of it, and that you import from Apollo Server. They want to do some optimizations, I think, and some different things with the type definitions, so they started you doing this. I don't think it actually does anything yet, but I think it's something they're going to be adding in the future. And then I have two basic queries here to show you guys dates stuff. So right now I'm treating the dates as string. So I take a date as an argument, and then I return tomorrow's date as a string. And so that's the first way I handle dates, but we'll talk about more about that in a second. Here are my resolvers. And here is the type definition for that. I'll talk about that in a second. And here's just me um, starting the server. So creating the server, Apollo server, passing the type defs and the resolvers, and then starting it right here and printing out the URL that it's starting at. All right, so first off, I want to talk about this type definition right here. How did I figure out that this was supposed to be iResolvers? Uh, so this is what you use to just uh, put all your resolvers in there. So as usual, I like to hit Command or Control on Windows, and you just click on the Apollo server, and you can see the type definition for it. So here's the constructor, and it takes a config and a cores. Uh, I'm not using anything for cores right now, so I clicked on the config, and if we scroll down in this, we can see there are two keys, type defs and resolvers. We can see the type defs need to be document nodes or an array of them, and the resolvers um, should be iResolvers. And so that's how I figured out you put iResolvers here. And so this is something that you can get from Apollo Server to get the type definitions for that. And I can also just click on that if I want to and figure out what the uh, what that type actually is. But anyway, let's jump into actually handling dates. So uh, I have tomorrow and I have yesterday. And this is one way I like to do it. And this is just handling them as strings. So I pass a date as a string in. I parse the date right here, and then I just say, uh, once I have my date object, I'm adding a single day to it. I'm now formatting it and sending it to the client. And I'm doing the exact same thing for yesterday, but instead I'm subtracting a day. So I can take a look at this in GraphQL Playground, and I can see when I call yesterday, um, and this is uh, August the 12th, and I subtract a day, we get the 11th, and if I make this uh, tomorrow, and we run that again, we now get the 13th. So this is uh, easy to do, and uh, that's one way you can handle it, but there's another way you can do this. So the downside to this is notice I am uh, having to format these in both places, and maybe you want to keep everything consistent, and I'm also parsing the date here, which I don't want to parse every single time maybe. Um, so there's a way around these things and that is to use scalars. So this is something that Apollo allows you to do and also GraphQL. And they actually have a nice example of how to do this with dates. If you scroll down, uh, we can create our own date object or date scalar. So what we can do to do this is we'll copy this example here. And I'm just going to paste it at the top. So we need to import these two guys and now we add this to our resolver map. So I'm going to add mine to my resolver map, which is right here. So outside of query, I'm going to put it here. And then the name here is date, but you could call this anything you want. And when you call whatever you call it here, you also need to call it in your type definition. So I have to say scalar date. Now if I want to, I could name this my date, and if I name it my date, you need to make sure it matches up here. And now what I need to do is I can use this type wherever I want. So let's say I take a date as my parameter and I return a date um, back to the client. So now 
how this is handled is right here. So first off, the name and description, this is something that you get um, in GraphQL Playground. So if I come over here and I look at my schema and let me refresh this, um, I now have the date and if I click on the date, I can see um, date custom scalar type and we can see that's exactly what we said here. So this is basically, uh, we could rename this if we want to, custom description for the date scaler. So whatever you want to put there, you can and it will reflect in the documentation over here in GraphQL Playground. So here's our custom description. All right, the next one is you just have to specify what happens when you parse the value and serialize the value. Um, so the first thing, parsing the value, this is when it comes in. So in this case, you'll notice they just do a new date on that to so the value, for example. So in our case, I'm going to pass in a date as a string like this, and so I need to parse that to the correct type. So in this case, to be able to parse that, I'm just going to use day.js here instead of using the regular date. And then when I serialize this, this is when you send to the client. So for example, what you see over here when you make the request, it's going to serialize that. So in this case, I want to use the format. Um, they were sending it as an integer. I want to send mine as a string, but you have that choice. Um, so we're going to say value here, um, and then we're going to say dot format, and we're going to say mmdd -Y, 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 y. Now, I actually don't know what the value when we serialize, if this is going to be um, a string or if it's going to be a day object, because when we get it right here, um, we turn it into a day object. So actually this is something I want to console log and see what the value of that is. Um, and then this last part, I actually don't really understand what this parse little literal is. I think this is what uh, they want represented or whether it's an integer or a string, a boolean, what kind of thing it's stored. So in this case, I think we want to store this as a string. So in that case, I'm going to say day.js um, and just return it like that. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it. I often don't really use scalars that much or often at all. All right, so now let's try this out. So here is my console. And now if I call this, well actually, uh, we can see what the value is here. Um, so that was my value here, that's the string. So it actually is um, parsing it as a string. So we need to do uh, that, that's good. And now I don't think we no longer need to um, do both of these operations. So I don't think I need to format or to parse it because it's going to come in as a date object now. So I'm just going to say date.subtract1 and then I'm going to say date.add1. And now when it comes from the client, we're going to here parse it and then when we send it back to the client, we're going to format it the way we want it. So well, we can give this a try, and we're going to get the same result. Now we can try yesterday, um, and we run that, and now we get yesterday's date like that. So this is another way you can handle uh, GraphQL types, the dates, um, and you can do these custom things to serialize and deserialize it. Now when you send this to the client, you can pretty much send it in any way you want to, but it needs to be either like a string, a boolean, a number, or something. And then on the client side, they can actually parse it into a date object over there. So you'll have to do that um, on that side to be able to handle it. So this is only for handling the date server side and then sending it back. And this is also noteworthy to say this does not just work for dates. You can do this for pretty much any type that you want to. You just have to implement these values right here, parsing it and serializing it. Well, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.